glucose with the OHs gives a negative charge because of the electron pairs. Remember, you get a phosphate out here with a real electronegative oxygen. One bonding, one double bound. You got another one that's probably got a proton on it, but this one here, the three-headed alien, that guy puts a negative charge out there that all these waters are going to suck onto it. You're going to end up with this radius surface, actually, because it's three-dimensional, remember, of this negative electromagnetic charge all around a glucose. So as soon as it comes into your cell, it gets phosphorylated on the six carbon. That's where they call it the 6GP. 6GP, that's not guanosine, that's glucose with a phosphate. So we should probably kind of have that orange on there, right? So if you color code those, you know what they are. So the point is, when your cell membrane gets a glucose in it, and it gets phosphorylated, it's in the cell. It's stuck there. It ain't going nowhere. One glucose will hold approximately 20 waters around it. So see why being dehydrated can have a lot to do with just your sugar metab metabolism, period. So some of these drinks, I don't want to mention their names, but when they get a lot of sugar in them, that sugar is holding water. So the water isn't available. It's like the sodium ion was I showed before. It's going to hold the water. So by holding it, it's not available to do cell processes, which is usually what you drink water to begin with for. So here we go again, a little tour of a hydrated glucose molecule. The six carbons, how many oxygens? One, two, three, four, five, six even though that's holding on to the phosphate. So you got your glucose sugar, comes right into the cell, phosphorylated. It's got all these waters hanging on it. 20 of them for each one. So essentially what will happen is you will get this radius surface around the glucose that is all negative. So enzymes are able to find glucose, distinguish it. Since we got cut off before, we were talking about the sodium. So now that's going to fall. If you feel like you got to go fast, and then when you watch on film, you need to slow down because the eye doesn't go as fast as the ear. So sodium, again, was what made the salt water. So sodium ion with a real small ionic radius is able to hold three waters around it. So that what you end up with, again, is this ion in water that is hydrated. It's got waters three molecules thick all the way around it. Potassium, on the other hand, with a bigger ionic radius, just the inner part of the plus that the one plus charge that sodium has is over a bigger surface. So it's not as strong as the little tiny salt sodium is. So potassium only holds two waters. So these plus charged cations are floating around in water with the plus sides all hanging out. So just like a magnet, these cations with their plus charge are still, even when you got water around them, are gonna have a positive charge out there Positive surface charge, you'd call it. And this is really important because, like I was saying, not only is salt water in the ocean for animals and that, it's in your blood. You've got to keep a constant saline solution. They call it isotonic pressure and osmotic pressure and stuff, but it's just salt water. You need salt, pure water. It's really good for you. So what actually happened, I read, was these people were marathon running up in the hills, drinking pure deionized distilled water. They ended up getting heart attacks. You 
want ions in the water. Because what I'm stressing here is this stuff is an electromagnetic interaction is really what ha is happening here. So in the blood, what was happening, they were drinking so much water, it was flushing all the sodium ion, potassium ions out of their blood. They got a heart attack, especially potassium for your heart. So deionized, pure water. Pure water is poison. And salt water. is poison. So you need to learn chemistry because it's the dose. Chemists use a little C in brackets. Concentration. All about the concentration of it. So what do athletes do when they're out there training for football in the summertime, sweating, all the ions lead the blood, heart attack. What do they give you? Salt tablets. So now you take a bunch of salt tablets in your blood. What's the salt doing now? It's holding all the water. Makes your blood so thick, now your heart can't pump it, you get a heart attack. So you've got to find the equilibrium part on this. This happens every year. Every summer I read about a high school kid that gets overheated, has a heart attack right there on the playing field. Yeah, well, there was a famous Minnesota Viking in summer camp. Think, with all the medics and doctors around, same thing. You can't have one thing be the answer here. You take the salt pill, makes your blood too thick. You'll, ha you'll have the ions in your cells. Don't take the salt tablet. All the salts get flushed out of your cell. Cells burst. Red blood cells, some famous ones. Catastrophic physical effects from this. So, all I really want to say again was if you kind of picture this, whenever water is hydrating something, picture the water having hands and they grab onto the cation. Okay, the ears are just kind of the flip side of it, but there's always going to be electron hands grabbing. And that's pretty much the way you can picture that. What I remember what started this was, was when children get diarrhea, all the salts get flushed out. So there's sodium, there's potassium, there's magnesium, these are two plus, there's calcium, two plus, uh, Potassium again, but those are the four big ones. Sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. And the calcium and potassium are the two for your heart. Your heart's a muscle, right? You've heard lately about leg cramps at nights. Well, it's the potassium. People get low potassium level. And again, what I'm stressing with this type of technique is we're thinking ahead. It's never one, it's a pair. So the pair of potassium and sodium, it's a ratio of these two. So if you're getting leg cramps at night, people take a lot of potassium. Well, now your potassium to sodium level may be off, which it usually isn't because we have such a high sodium intake anyway. So a lot of the potassium deficiency is probably related to an overdose of the sodium. So we got to think in pairs here, sodium, potassium, sodium, potassium. Calcium and magnesium, those are the ones. You won't absorb calcium if you don't have magnesium. It's that simple. And again, what I wanted to stress was that it's electrical. I saw a map of the Earth with lightning strikes going everywhere, all these bolts coming from the space station you could see on the surface of the Earth. That's what these cell membranes are like. There's electrons moving, there's electricity in this. These things are squirted through, a phosphorylation happens where an oxygen blams into a carbon atom. It's electromagnetic. Water does not conduct electricity. You need ions in it. So pure water.